Sensor scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons or advancements. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see. The future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You're wasting your energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Watch how I saw it. Now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello! Wow, that was a tad louder. Sorry about that. And welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me this week, we have Amy. Hello! Wow, that was even louder. <laughs> <laughs> Doing that on purpose to mess with my levels, damn it. We have Scarecrow. Hello, hello. We have Eugene. Hello. We have Stuart. Hello. And we have EJ. Hello, everybody. We also have a really airlock. We have a really weird <laughs> echo. Um, Michael was going to join us, but I decided to throw him out the airlock instead. So he may or may not turn up in the future. Who knows? I'm gonna send these guys out to clean the hull eventually. There's a lot of things stuck near the airlock. That's your job. Yeah, no, I'm the captain. You can't make the captain clean the hull. That's, yes, that's, you can. That's for the grunts. Nope, captain's job. <laughs> anyway. Hey, you keep throwing the grunts out the airlock without the suits to go clean that stuff, so is it any wonder that there's crap there? <laughs> it's not my fault. It's, they take too long okay, to put them on. <laughs> you gotta do it right. First you strip them naked, then you throw them out the airlock. Exactly, and then they just grab the bodies they can hold on to as they fly past, pull them off the hull, and put them solved. Was that a Babylon 5 reference, stripping them before you toss them out the airlock? No, not at all. <laughs> Well, it it was, but it wasn't. But yeah, they actually yeah, said that in Babylon Five. They're like, um, like this this guy's complaining to the captain. Your first officer said he's going to throw me out the airlock, and the captain goes, "Seriously, you did that? No. How many times have I told you? You strip them first. <laughs> we need the clothing. There's a resource shortage. We're not getting a whole lot from Earth right now." Mm. Yep. So anyway, moving on to tonight's topic, we have the top five robots in sci-fi and hopefully if we have enough time left which we probably won't i might have to move it to next week again i want to talk about whether um the robots in star wars are sentient or not so anyway let's move on to the top five list and i'll start with michael's list because before he was launched out the airlock he, i made sure he wrote it down for me <laughs> so michael's number five is K9, the doctor's faithful companion robot Stuart, number five, go. Uh, my number five is Clank from Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> nice. A uh, tiny little robot. EJ, number five. Cylons. Cylons. Can't go wrong with the Cylons. Uh, human Cylons well, no, or it robots? No, wrong with the Cylons as they nuke your homeworld, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, so human form Cylons or the toasters? I was thinking human form, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, it can't go wrong with number five. Anyway, no, six. 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 Caprica six. Yes, six. Can't go wrong with six. I got it right. <laughs> I got it right. I was like, I think that was a dude. <laughs> anyway, moving right along. Eugene. Uh, we'll go with Robbie the Robot. Robbie the Robot. That's the old um, Nintendo thing, isn't it? No. no. Forbidden Planet. Oh, I'm thinking of something else. What is that robot in Smash Bros? Anyway. Yeah. Scarecrow, number five. Analyzer from Space Battleship Yamato. Nice. Also known as IQ-9 if you only watch the English Starblazer variant. Nice. After all, who can't love a drunk robot? <laughs> it's, it's effectively Bender, isn't it? <laughs> Except that predates Bender by about 20 years. <laughs> so it's Bender. <laughs> It's gonna go with you're Bender. A, you're a douche. It's what I do. It's what I do. That's why I'm the captain. Anyway, um, Amy, number five. Um, even galleons. Even galleons? Shh. It's in the mech suits. Oh, the giant ass mech suits. I'm with you. Now remember, you only get one giant ass mech suit on per list, so make sure you make it a good one. You said I... we got two of them. Okay, we get two per list. You get two of them on this one. <laughs> 
So, anyway. So, everyone's done their number five? Yep. Well, my number five is Sunny from iRobot. Because mm. my Sunny... Because the iRobot Blu-ray came with a, an actual head. So, mine's got Super Saiyan hair, a Saiyan scouter, and a Naruto headband. Oh, God. I had nowhere else to put them, and it looks hilarious. <laughs> And if you look at it from the right angle, angle, it looks like he's about to kick your ass. <laughs> She's got those weird sort of eyes that just give you the, the terrifying sort of stare. Anyway, let's move on to number four. EJ. Uh, let me look at my list. Bicentennial Man. Oh, Robin Williams. Mm. Also, from the book as well, it's it's the, the, the book itself, or the short, it's actually a short story is really good as well. Yeah. Yeah, I just remember Robin Williams in the movie and being a robot that slowly but surely tried to make himself human. He was finally granted yeah. human status and then died. No, he died before That's he was right. granted. He, like, That's how he, he like, died as they were making an announcement and he didn't hear it. Yeah. Um, okay. My number four, this is my giant mech on the list, is the Blade Logo from Zoids, Chaotic Century. Can't go wrong with a giant lion with samurai swords on each side of it. Yeah, I gotta agree with that. <laughs> it's not samurai swords, it's just swords. Yeah, it's the same difference. Giant giant ass swords on it on each side. Giant ass blades. Yeah. Hence the name. Anyway. Uh Stuart, four. Uh my number four is the Scudders from Red Dwarf. <laughs> oh those little <laughs> bastard me. <laughs> the maintenance ro- the evil maintenance robots. Oh, I love this. Scudders. Scudders are great. Scudders are great. Ooh, echo. Ooh, echo. Echo, 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 um, B9 from Lost in Space. Ooh, nice. Anyone else? Haro from Gundam 00. Because they actually made a useful one this time. <laughs> <laughs> Has EJ done his number four? I'm yeah, not... I was Bicentennial, man. That's right. <laughs> wow, my brain is just totally not working today. I mean, well, what do you mean today? <laughs> <laughs> That's something new. It's an incredibly fair point. This this podcast is effectively me having sort of moments of <laughs> followed by really bad jokes. Sort of half the time we <laughs> have dementia. Yeah, well, that would explain I... a lot. My number four R two D two. R two D two, nice. So moving on to number three. Uh, we'll start with Michael's number three is Data from Star Trek. Remember, in one of the episodes, he has a phone in him. Therefore, he is technically the world's first Android phone. <laughs> oh. That's really bad. Yeah. He was dreaming. That's beside the point. <laughs> That's still, still the most random scene. It's like he starts ringing. He looks down. He's like, what the hell? Hope it's not it's a phone. It's like, it's like how do... What? <laughs> oh... I'm more surprised they got reception in space. <laughs> it was a dream! <laughs> but dreams always make logical sense. Of course. Logic was logic. C- kind of like you. Yeah, exactly. Reasons. Yeah. <laughs> so my number three is the DRD, specifically 1812 ah. from Farscape. Because it used to drive around singing, which was hilarious. Yeah. And it, 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 it'd move its little <laughs> antennas in tune with it. It was absolutely hilarious. One of my favourite pieces of music and a scutter singing it. I was just like, yep, you win, you win. <laughs> so, anyway. Moving on. Anyone else's number three is open to it. Uh, Twiggy from Battle, or from Buck Rogers. Nice. Oh, wow. Going old school. That's been in a while. Going really old school. Uh, I'm going, my number three is the Iron Giant. Nice. Mm. What? I know it says open brain ships count. What? 
the what count? Brain chips. No. They're... Okay. Don't think so. Don't know what they are, so I'm just going to go with no. From what show, babe? It's actually from a book. Anne McCaffrey. Are you talking about oh, the Anne McCaffrey ones? Yeah. yeah. I'd count them. You'd count them? Well, we got one vote in favour, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> no, that doesn't count. One person's like, but maybe it kind of should. Yeah. You're like, well, okay, they're, never they're mind. A they're a giant spaceship that's got a... It's controlled by a... By a Brain in a bottle, basically. Well, then it's a spaceship, so it doesn't count as a robot. Well, a robot is. Well, it's, it's, I know there's a fairly semantic robot. line between a robot and a spaceship, but if it's a big, it's, if it's big, big, and it's not a robot, it's a ship. And you describe it as a giant ship, then it's a ship, <laughs> not a robot. Well, the the robots in iRobot were defined by their ability to have intelligence not their physical shape so for example they had robots the size of buildings that literally were just like big squares uh you mean the de the demolition bots no 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 I i'm not talking about the movie i robot i'm talking about the the series of books written by uh, oh well uh, then you're getting way too technical for me <laughs> <laughs> you and your no, technical mumbo jumbo no, it's not mumbo jumbo. It's just that they, the way they looked at robots was basically sentient computers. Okay. Yeah, it didn't matter if it was mobile or not. Uh, well, I should have done a better, better definition of robots at the start of this. Then, fine, Amy, you can have your brain ship. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, I give up. I give up. <laughs> so yeah. So who hasn't done three? I haven't. I haven't either. Alright, we'll, we'll go with Eugene and Scarecrow. Uh, I did number three. Mine was uh, Twiggy from Buck Rogers. Oh, yeah. Go to Scarecrow it is. The VF25S Armored Messiah from Macross Frontier. I think you need to buy a vowel on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> It's basically a tr you've basically got a transforming fighter plane that turns into a giant robot. So, uh, so it's yeah, Starscream. But the, it's not intelligent. No, but it's, it's it's a piloted unit. It still counts as a robot. Yeah, I'll allow it just because. Because he's got your bloody blade liger, which is a piloted unit. Yeah, but it does have its own sentient level to a point. So does this thing because it's it can be remote con it can basically. Punch out its pilot and then fly around and pick it back up. I'll allow it. Why not? Just, just yeah. Semantics aside. So, who hasn't done their three? I haven't. EJ. EJ. Why do I always get EJ and Eugene backwards? You sound nothing alike. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Roy Batty from Blade Runner. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. Whose birthday was a couple of days ago. He literally was just born. Yeah. So, and he was a synth, wasn't he? Or is, yeah, he was, uh, um, what do they call him? I'm just going with synth because that's the word they used in the Humans TV show. No, but that's not the, the word. Replicant. replicant. Replicant, that's, the, that's good. Yeah. Okay, so sweet, we've already got replicants running around. Excellent. Yes. And they're going to go and they're going to find a massive pyramid that's just going to happen to spring up in the middle of L.A. And they're going to grab the guy's throat and be like, I want more life, fucker. Because yeah, that's, that's what he does in the movie. That works. Okay, moving on to number two. Number two, Terminator T eight hundred, specifically the Arnie one, because it's great. The one from the first movie that dies, because or no, the one from the second movie, because that one was better than the one from the first movie. None of the other Terminators count. Just the one from the T eight hundred from the second movie. I'll be back. Yeah. Okay, okay, little Miss Psy Girl, what's your number two? I'm trying to find out its proper name. <laughs> it's um, from Kitty Grade, it's their ship. What? Oh, um. Lumiere? Whirlwind. Whirlwind. Lumiere. <laughs> Why do I think of the candlestick from um, Beauty and the Beast when she said Lumiere? Lumiere oh, is the. 
little girl that the, declares uh, 2OC. Okay. Um, hey, Stuart, what's your two? <laughs> You're going to laugh at this. Huey, Dewey, and Louie from Silent Running. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a second to work out what the hell you are going on about, and then it immediately clicked. Yep. <laughs> the three the three most lovable d- robots pre-Star Wars that could play yeah. poker. Uh... They could wield, guard at will, perform surgery, and play poker. Uh, that's pretty funny. Uh... I like how the programming was hardwired in. <laughs> they had uh, before they had like software, really. Uh, uh yes. Okay, well, M- Michael's number two was R two D two. Oops. So. Yeah. Oh. So yeah. Scarecrow, what's your two? My number two. Oh, wonder why it's R two D two. <laughs> Eugene, what's your number two? Cameron from the Terminator Chronicles. Oh, nice, nice, yes. Hey, hey, we got to get Summer Glau on the list. I mean, come on now. Oh yeah, I, I said that any any list is incomplete without at least one appearance of Summer Glau. <laughs> so, if you haven't done your number two, shout out now. Me. Uh. The Burning Gundam from Build Fighters. Build Burning. Build Burning, yeah. Yeah. So we're now onto the really important ones. Number one. Wait, wait, I, 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 mine was R two D two. So Michael and I think it was Scarecrow. Yep. Screw you guys. You stole my number two. <laughs> Thank you. I stole it earlier. <laughs> See, I decided not to do any Star Wars stuff because I knew everyone else would take care of it. Just sort of <laughs> hilarious, considering. Okay, well, considering you're the Star Wars addict. Yeah. See, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in time and I'm going to change Michael's number two because he's not here, so he can't stop me. And Michael's number two is no longer R two D two. Michael's number two <laughs> is now the robots from, um, crap. I forgot what it's called. Mystery Mystery Science Theater. Oh God. <laughs> that is Michael's second favorite robot now. Those guys. Speaking of which, they're bringing that back. And, and we'll make his uh, number one be Muffet from Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, to be honest, I like his number one, so... So I'm going to leave his number one alone. No one's going to expect my number one, so... Hook knows my number one. Well, hey, James. James has just joined us in the chat. Didn't see him hiding there. There, so, uh, my number one is Johnny Five. Because you can't go wrong with a little bit of Short Circuit. Still one of my favourite movies of all time. Uh, disassemble. Dead. Reassemble. No, you can't reassemble. Disassemble. Dead? Freaks the fuck out. Pisses off down the road. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it's like, he looks into the bookshop, he's like, information! <laughs> it's like, well, the times before the internet. <laughs> yeah, well. Uh, okay. You've done Michael's or you're doing... Uh, Michael's number one is Romy from Andromeda. Mm. Yeah, that's a another fun-loving robot. Yeah, I recall a line along the lines of, did you wear gloves when you were touching me? Yeah. Or making yeah. me? <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag seems legit. Okay. James says the Scutters. Yeah, we had them earlier. Um, scutters are hilarious. I love the Scutters. Uh, Scarecrow. The ZHM FX 28 Strike Freedom. Again, it's got a limited AI built into it. Yeah. You, seriously, I've got to sell you some vowels. <laughs> Just... <sighs> so, yeah, t- t- yeah. We need to really, really, really need to send you some vowels. Actually, you know, right now, right now we're raising fun to buy Scarecrow some vowels. To donate, please go to safesci <laughs> and click donate. Um... 
Moving right along. Amy, number one. Mine's Atherin's, um Haro's from Gundam Seed. I got a sneaking suspicion most of yours were huge and thus break the two huge rule. That's not huge! It's a little freaking tiny. It's tongue. ginormous. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's not. It's a ball. Catherine's Haro's are a ball that fits in your hand. It's basically a cricket ball that talks and does weird shit. <laughs> Sounds kinky. I just have to say, nobody in America knows what a cricket ball is, so... <laughs> baseball, so, then, you th retards. Th think of baseball <laughs> minus about 10% with extra mass, and you're fairly close. It's favorite uh, word to say is, I won't accept that, I won't accept that. Oh, God. <laughs> that is terrifying. Try yeah. about 10 of them running around at one point. Yeah. So, Scarecrow, just so you know, that was a blink of your future when you're finally... Hook up with Amy properly. <laughs> You'd just be her running around the house, just repeating that line over and over and over and over. Yay! James chose um, eighteen twelve from Farscape um, as his uh -oh. fav as his as his number one, which was my number three. So woo, James, you and me, we both win. So do I get to do my number one or not? Yeah, you get to do your number one. Patience, Padawan. Patience. Padawan. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, youngling, please wait. <laughs> actually, Ooh, yeah. actually, he's married, so he might be classed as the oldest one amongst us. I, uh, engaged. Same difference. <laughs> haven't, haven't tied the knot yet. I like it how he says yes. No, no, because engaged means he can still be salvaged. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of salvage, that leads on perfectly to my number one. Speaking of which, we are raising money to go and rescue Stuart. To <laughs> assist us with such, please go to um, savesci-fi.com and click the donate button. <laughs> should, should make a GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> I've been engaged to the woman I love and I need help! <laughs> I can't escape! <laughs> no, uh, my number one is HK47 from Knights of the Old Republic. Oh! The meatbag droid. The meatbag assassin droid. Yeah. Wow, I haven't played Knights of the World Republic in like, Just ages. because I love it calling everyone Meatbag. Meatbag. <laughs> <laughs> Supplication. Do you want me to destroy this Meatbag Master? Uh. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, EJ, what's your number one? Data. Duh. Yeah, predictable. Boring. Not boring. You can kick all your guys' ass. Tell you had 100 to give him a run for his money. Who would? T-800. That's the, uh, the Terminator. Star Wars assassin droid? No, no Terminator. Terminator. Oh, T-800? Nah. Maybe in strength, but not in intelligence. And not in speed. Oh, yeah. James says Data is, is his number three. Well, boo to you, because he's my number one. Because Data rules. <laughs> and he would stomp on a, a DRD, so ma. <laughs> Uh, I'd so know. I'd so love if they brought Data into the new Star Trek just to see just for EJ's pissed off reaction <laughs> when, they, when they butcher it. Oh, no, no, they, the Data somehow comes back in time to for Star Trek Three, and is just full ape shit at that point. He's like he's gone full um, rampant like Cortana, just sort of <laughs> walking around, sort of half finishing his own sentences and half just rambling incoherently just in the background. <laughs> Yeah, my number one will take one look at Vader and say, that's nice. Boom. Done. My number one, Optimus Prime. Nice. Yeah, okay. Optimus Prime's got Data. It's just, Bullshit. Data doesn't stand much of a chance against Optimus Prime. Unless it's I the just... movie Optimus Primes from the Bay series, and then he'll probably just curl up in the fetal position and start crying. Nah. Because he's got the Enterprise. Okay. Just fucking shoot it from orbit. Nuke yeah, it from but... orbit, it's the only way to be sure. Actually, no, correction. Photon torpedo it from orbit, it's the only way to be sure. Exactly. Hmm. So, yeah, so have we done all Nuke the number ones? Until they glow, shoot them in the dark. Have we done all the number ones? Yeah. That, actually, that would be a scary thought. A transformer taking the form of a starship. Yeah. Ever heard, that... of, ever heard of Starscream? Actually, have you ever heard of the bloody train that turns into a space shuttle? Because <laughs> that's a thing. 
Yes, that is a thing. That is a thing. I, I, I can't remember what the hell it's called, but... Neither can I, I'm usually good with my Transformer names. Yeah. Actually, there are people that have made Star Trek Transformers of the ships. Oh god. Yeah, they, they did a Star Wars run where all the, the different spaceships turned into fucking giant robots of the equivalent character. Which was sort of weird. Yeah, I don't like to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Sort of one of those, yeah, I'm gonna leave that alone moments. <laughs> yeah, you won't believe this, but James's number five was my number one. Johnny Five. Anyway, um, let's move on and talk and move on to the next sort of big topic, and that is: Are Star Wars robots sentient? And if they are, are they slaves? Depends on which robots you're talking about. Specifically, well, they're certainly enslaved. Yeah. Uh, well, it, well, we'll go with any effective robot. I mean, they're certainly enslaved. Yeah. Well, if okay, if they're manufactured, and they can they be enslaved? Well, okay. That's why they I'm asking are if they're sentient. As slaves, that is the role they fit in society. The question isn't whether or not they're slaves. The question is whether or not uh, it is okay to enslave them. Yeah, exactly. Are they sentient, and is it okay for them to be enslaved? Is effectively the point. And is, right. is Star Wars seriously teasing the most hilarious robot uprising of all time? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Star Wars Holiday Special 2, the droids take over. Yeah. Um, it also depends, in some ways, on the droid. Um, like, your battle droids from, epi from the prequels, I'd say that they don't, they're not really sentient. Well, they are to a point. They, they <laughs> fear for their own safety. They... They, they have they personalities. They have personalities. They show every one of the major signs for being sentient. Hell, when, hell, when they get chopped up, they go, ow, 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 ow. Exactly. And they, no, no. Yeah. Uh-oh. In some ways, they are. But in other ways, they're also, I'd call them half, half sentient. They're kind of limited. Because they oh, react the, like that, but they don't have any... Their, their intelligence is limited, yes. But that doesn't mean that... They're not that sentient. Like, 3PO and R2-D2 are definitely sentient. Oh, damn, I was about... Well, that was again... At the come, they're, comes they're down not... to the tight, though. They're not built for battle, though. Well, R2 is by this point. Yeah. <laughs> R2's but gone through not... more updates than God. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I'm getting um... a vicious buzz from somewhere. Or is that just on my end? No, no, I'm getting it. I'm hearing it. I'm, hearing it. I'm not... Just blame Michael. Yeah, we'll just blame Michael. But, like, how... Okay, so... so It all comes down to how do we view sentience and how do we know. Now, the way I've always looked at it is they either know, like... There's always that philosophical question. How do you even know another human being is truly sentient or how do you know that they're aping sentience? Well, and, uh, well and, the, the, the thing is that science has already defined what sentience is and the the sort of the scientific definition of sentience is the capacity to feel, perceive, or experience um, subjectively. Sure. But how do I know that you're actually feeling uh, and, and perceiving and feeling or that you're just imitating it? Well, yeah. And so that's, that's what comes down to the philosophical question is, and that it, it's an unanswerable question. Uh, all science has been able to say, look, if it passed the Turing test, then, it, then, then we will qualify it as sentient. Um, so the question is, do these uh, machines pass a Turing test? Uh, or, um, and, and even if they do, how do we, you know, either in the Star Wars universe, they've come up with a way to see whether or not um, uh, they've come up a way, with a way to answer that question, or um, they're not sentient. Or they are sentient, and we're going to have a not massive Cylon uprising. Yeah. Well, see, I, I think we can all agree on one thing. 
Whether R2 counts as sentient or not, he has some serious anger management issues. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, why would it do now? I don't know, abuses everyone and no one can understand it? So. He, he, he's the character who's so foul mouthed, he bleeped out every word he said. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, basically, the way I look at it is how do we tell if something is sentient or not? And the effect, is, and normally the test is. Do they recognize themselves in a mirror as separate from, say, an identical version of the same species? So a lot of birds aren't sentient. They don't recognize themselves in a reflection. But a crow can. And dolphins can. And elephants can. And a lot of the higher primates can. Well, so a lot dogs... of them have been given sentient, sort of sentient level. Well, okay, so how are you defining sentience? Because I've always thought of sentience as uh, human-level self-awareness and intelligence. Uh, the, which, well, as smart as a crow and a dolphin might be, they don't have. Yeah, I see, I look at sentience the way that, the, that science defines it, which is the ability to recognize oneself as independent of its environment. So effectively, self-awareness would be the, right would be along the lines of sentience. And there's a lot of species that we have found fall into that category, not just us. Hmm. Yeah, so, I'm going to do a little research to see if that's that uh, the definition. Because there was, a, there was a, a study done in... Um, in over in the States somewhere where someone got a paintball gun and dressed in a Richard Nixon mask, I think it was about three or four of them, shot blue paintballs on a certain crow's and not only did they notice that the crows recognized the blue was on them and they really did not like having the blue on them, they actually went to the effort of cleaning the blue off themselves, they also noticed that the crows would recognize the Richard Nixon masks and attack them. <laughs> not only that, but other crows that were not shot by the paintballs also retaliated against the Richard Nixon masks. Clearly crows don't like Nixon. So they're sort of, not only are crows smart enough to know that they are they, they're also smart enough to tell all of us apart and smart enough to tell each other which one of us is bad and needs to be killed. So, yeah. <laughs> That's it. They're not smart enough to work out a mask because in one of the tests the person took the mask off and the crows stopped attacking them. So they're, they're still terrifyingly smart. They're just not overly right. terrifyingly smart. So, I mean, so using that definition, yes... The, they are sentient, but uh, or the, the robots in the Star Wars universe are sentient, but um, it, we have found it perfectly acceptable to enslave non uh, or, or, or lower lower mammals um, and make them do our, our bidding. Um, so the question now is, uh, are they human level sentience, which would or intelligence, which is what would enable us to uh to to or, or, or blah which would make enslaving them wrong yeah yeah are they how far up the sentient scale are they is what right. effectively you're saying and i would say they're fairly close to us either they are simulating um sentience because a lot of them act not wanting to get hurt like for instance the robot um in, uh, what is it, episode 6, when 3PO and R2-D2 are being taken into the Jabba the Hutt's palace, you see one of the walker droids upside down, and it's screaming, no, 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 as the hot branding iron doesn't quite touch its foot and steam appears. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but it comes pretty close to touching it. But the point is that it's effectively saying, it's effectively not wanting that to happen, so therefore there is definitely a level of self-awareness and going against its will to not be damaged. Right, but I mean, dogs avoid pain and don't want to be damaged. I mean, I've already conceded the fact that, yes, they, they do have at least a basic level of, of intelligence and self-awareness. The question now becomes, do they... Um, or, or are they human level, which is what would make enslaving them wrong? Well, why would... Who says we're, who <laughs> says we're bright some days? Yeah, well, who says that um, they have to be at our level for enslaving them to be wrong? Using 
animals like elephants and dolphins and that, a lot of people around the world do view that as wrong. Well, there's a difference between using and uh, and abusing. Yeah. Well, you know, yes, I I would I would agree that that um, you know hurting them and te- you know going out of your way to hurt them or or you know destroying them or whatnot casually is wrong. Um, but what about branding them? If by hurting the equivalent of hurting a droid would be damaging it, branding them would be a form of damage. But you wouldn't be you wouldn't brand an android, and and again, do they feel pain? Is there is is it actually damage, or are you simply just marking them so you can tell the difference? Yeah. You know, is putting a restraining bolt on them wrong? Yeah. You know, exactly. That's so that that's the thing, though. That's the whole point of the sort of yeah. It's like, where would the lines be? So the question gets, remains: if we have made if we have personally created something with the express purpose of fulfilling a function, does that mean that they have to be subservient to us? Or does that mean that they are equal to us? Because robots are made. There's no if, ands, or buts. They're made. Yeah. It's, which means that they are different on a, they're on a different level, a different sort of category to living organisms. Yeah. They weren't accidents. Exactly. But I mean, I, I, I'm not quite sure how that how that factors in. Okay, yes, they were made, but again, it comes down to do they have human level intelligence? Because then they have the right to self determination. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes uh, what, they're too know. smart. Sometimes smarter they're too smart. So maybe. Using it. I'm sorry. Sometimes robots would be too smart for the humans that are using it. Okay, and that's another thing. If they surpass us in intelligence, why haven't they enslaved us? <laughs> maybe, you know? maybe they're kind, caring creatures that don't like to, that have been through a harsh enslavement and have decided now is the best time to not in, to not return the favor. <laughs> There's that, yeah. uh, and they so. also could be iRobot style um, laws. You know, well, not just the laws, but I mean, well, obviously those laws don't exist because you have battle droids and assassin droids and all that. But um, in the Star Wars universe, <laughs> but uh, eventually the robots evolve into these beings that kind of k- take care of us. And really, when you think about it, they're kind of the ones in charge now because we're so dependent on them uh, to take care of us. Yeah. All right. So just really quickly from James. Um, let's see, where was it? He says, last time there were two sentient humanoid types on this earth. One was miraculously vanishing. We basically wiped and raped them to extinction. Um, even in the Matrix, the evil AI is going out of its way to do its best to, um, um, comfortably make humans live out their lives so we don't raise up against them. Um, I think we mu- uh, we pretty much culturally decided that humans will be, uh, yeah, I, could, I don't want to say that word, um, pretty much pricks to um, future AI. Yeah, we, we have effectively decided oh. that futuristic robots will be our slaves no matter what. But the question is, when is that We're, line uh... crossed? When, when do <laughs> we write, the, where do we draw the line between this thing is okay to be an appliance to this thing is deserving of respects and rights of its own. Because this sort of question can be raised the whole way across. Right, like personal, battles, non-human like, person. Exactly, like across Battlestar Galactica and across all these other sci-fi series, there's quite a few moments where you, they have the discussion of this thing is a robot, it is it is not technically living, but does it have a right? Um, it's like Fran in Stargate Atlantis. She was a robot that was sentient, knew exactly what she was made for, and was more than happy to effectively commit suicide in order to complete her mission. So, it was sort of like she was made specifically to do what she did, and the writers made the conscious decision to make her want to do it. And that's always sort of troubled me a little, to be honest. Well, and again, for me, where I I would 
make that distinction between when are they <laughs> when are when are they deserving of personhood and when are they just an appliance uh, would be whether or not they have uh, human level intelligence or beyond. Um, India has declared dolphins as non-humanoid humans. That that that's a that's a prank. That's so, that, that's, that's, that's a, a that's a hoax. That's a hoax. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey Stuart, how much news do you have? Oh, oh yeah, I forgot model report. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so enjoying this discussion. I couldn't. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> let it go. So, so, yeah. just, just just uh just admit uh that I won and and uh, we can move forward. <laughs> let's just leave it as a tie and let's go, Stuart. <laughs> or we we'll do closing <sighs> afterwards. No, no, we'll do closing News. now. News can wait. We've still got twenty minutes. Calm down. We've still got, we've still got the other um... the model report. Yeah, it's plenty of time. I don't know what I'm doing. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> the confidence is overwhelming. <laughs> so, in closing, I think that the robots themselves are sentient and are deserving of rights and respect which they're not shown in that universe right and, and i yeah, mm-hmm. yeah that, that, that that's effectively it I, I i think that they've more than demonstrated that they are sentient they're self-aware they 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 are adverse to being damaged they they show all the signs that we would categorize as sort of a, a sentient object trying to preserve itself now is that programmed yes our brains are programmed our brains are effectively a genetic program that is then res- then interacts with environmental factors, which results in who we are now. Because our DNA, all our DNA wants to do is keep going along, along and along and along down the down the chain of generations. Now, in the robot equivalent, that would be the software, and their 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 brain would be the thing that if they wanted to sort of do that, they could. But they don't have to because they live for potentially hundreds of years. So it's less of an issue. So our DNA effectively programs us at birth, presets a lot of the, the wiring and the scenario editing, and then the environmental factors thereafter change and rework that wiring to reach the point where we are. So I think, yes, they they are sentient and they are deserving of rights. Anyway. Well, and I, I would say that, yes, the evidence would seem to indicate that they are, uh, sentient beings, though um, I, I do wonder if there is something uh, within something within the Star Wars universe that we are not aware of, because um, I mean, very clearly, characters like Obi Wan look down upon droids and see them as not living things, and expressly say in the prequel trilogy that they are not living things, that they they uh, they are not sentient. Basically, yeah. um, at the same time, if you look in the newest movie, if you look at Ray's reaction to BB-8 uh, and and saving him, she it calls basically refers to him to BB-8 as a person. Yeah. So I'm wondering if there's something we don't know, or if this is a debate that hasn't been answered within the Star Wars universe itself. Well, I'm going to turn to our resident Star Wars guy because he, <laughs> he knew I would. Yeah. Um personally I think that um certain droids are sentient, R two and three PO and that Oberon was wrong. Just because okay. just, just just purely on the fact that the whole stupid Jedi Order thing is messed up. Yeah, the Jedi Order, they, they do sort of tend to sort of seek life on the... Does it have midichlorians? Yes. It's alive! Does it have midichlorians? No. Goodbye! So. <laughs> midichlorians, the bane of the prequels. And Jar Jar. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay, anyway. But, so that does provide provide an interesting uh, twist on this argument, is is being having some connection to the Force... <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, within the Star Wars universe, at least, having some connection to Force, a prerequisite to being truly alive. Yeah. So anyway, let's let's move on to the news. Um, because yeah, we, we sort of need to do the news and the model report. So. Yep. And there's a whole bunch of um, stuff, and we'll start with uh, last night. Actually, the Golden Globes were on. 
Ooh, I thought you were going to go with the other thing that happened last night. I'll leave that to the end. Yeah. I'll leave the sad news to the end. Yeah, we'll, we'll leave the, the sad to the sad news until the end. Yeah. And uh, The Martian won a uh, Golden Globe. Nice. For... This is where it yeah, gets... but tell him for what. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. This is where it gets weird. It gets it, for best motion picture from musical or comedy. Wait, what? What? Yeah, Twentieth Century Fox entered it into the musical or comedy because it had comedic elements. But it's, it's a bit... <laughs> I know. It just it's Twentieth Century Fox. Yeah. Well, it's it's these these entire award ceremonies are kind of getting a little bonkers because like they've had they've had like. 80 minute shorts win before and, and crap like that. It's just, it's. I could see uh, absolutely anything winning Best Comedy. That was a spectacular movie. But The Martian for comedy? Once again, 20th Century Fox. I'm struggling to even remember jokes in that movie. It was, it was kind of subtle based in the early stages when he was growing the potatoes. It's like, yeah, suck that, bitches. And stuff like that. Yeah, fair point. Okay, anyway, keep going. Yeah, um, some awesome Firefly news. Uh, Jewel State is going to be joining uh, DC's Legends of Tomorrow cast. Very nice. Uh, she's gonna. She has been cast as uh, Rachel Tur- uh, Turner, described as a ch- tech genius uh, roboticist. So effectively, Kaylee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see she hasn't been typecast. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've got some really interesting Rebels news that uh, popped up today. Uh, Leia is going to be popping into Rebels. Nice. She's cool. going to be she's going to be coming back on the mid season premiere, actually. So the episode that comes back on the twentieth. Yeah, and she's oh, effectively yeah. young, isn't she? She's... Hurry up! Shut up! Not exactly <laughs> young. She 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 looks like how she looks in um yeah. in like episode four. <laughs> And she's got her attitude back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One of her first words is, put your helmets back on and keep your mouth shut. <laughs> she says it to Kanan and Ezra. Nice. Uh, X-Files. I've got some X-Files news. Uh, the X-Files reboot gets a uh, viral site and has the first minutes of the series premiere online. Oh, nice. So you can, uh, you're going to love the website. The website is doyoustillbelieve.com. <laughs> I wonder how much money they spent to get that <laughs> from some random conspiracy nut. Yep. Uh, so this is uh, in some in, this is a rumor, by the way. So don't take this with a grain of salt. Well, this is a rumor of the shortlist for the um, Han-, Han Solo um, anthology movie for the actors they were going to play in. Yep. Uh, so a uh, few uh, um. Uh, noticeable names. Uh, Miles Teller was uh, Reed Richards in the reasonably shitty Fantastic Four. Michael said he enjoyed that movie. Michael has a lot of problems. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, Michael's already said he hates us, so... Yeah. yeah. We hate you, too. Yeah. Anyway. Now we die. Yeah, the, Michael. Is, we, we, we hate Michael as much as River hates the Doctor. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> I got some sad, some sad DC news. Um, TNT um, canned the um, live-action Teen Titans, or they called it Titans, but the Teen Titans that, um, that they were going to do. Oh. <coughs> I'm, sad that it's ca- I'm sad that it's canned. Oh, well, move it over to um, CW and make it part of Arrow. <laughs> Problem solved. Moving right along. Wouldn't surprise me. Well, uh, that, speaking... that, that explains where Roy went. Speaking of Arrow, of Arrow I've got some um, Arrow news, actually. Yep. Um, Felicity, there was a rumor, possibly, that um, Felicity was going to be Oracle. Um, um, executive producer um, Wendy uh, Miracle confirmed that is not going to happen. Fair enough. So, yeah, and then we come to the very, very sad news at the end that the Goblin King himself, David Bowie, has passed away. Maybe for his birthday. He was 69. I wonder if we got a chuckle out of that. Yeah. Well, there, if there is a number for Bowie to go at it, and 
It has to be 69. Yep. So. Anyway. That's it for the news. It's sad my parents go to me yesterday that Dave Bowie died and I go, who's that? <laughs> yes, yes it is. You're out the wow. end. Goodbye. Anyway, moving on to the model report. Woo! For this week's model report, I decided to touch on what I didn't get a chance to touch on last week and some of the model kits that have been discontinued. So you have to check with your favorite model shops to see who still has what. Um, round two has canceled quite a few Star Trek kits, uh, including the reissued Star Trek uh, Enterprise Bridge. They canceled the reissued Romulan Bird of Prey, the K-7 Space Station, the Mr. Spock with, with the three snake heads sticking out of the ground, the Vulcan Shuttle, uh, Mobius models has canceled quite a few of their superhero kits, including Iron Man Mark III, Iron Man Mark VI, Black Widow from Iron Man, War Machine. They also reissued the old Aurora Superboy and Wonder Woman kits. <clears throat> um, re um, canceled about uh, more than a year ago, they did a Green Lantern kit. They also did a Spider-Man and Green Goblin kit. Uh, and the last ones I'm, I had to mention was the recently canceled, as in they were canceled effectively the end of last year, was the Dukes of Hazard kits. So, oh, if you're looking for any of these kits, you want to get them now because pretty soon they're not going to be available, and prices are already starting to rise on some of them. And that's your, my report from Perry County Hobbies. Sweet. Sweet. Yeah. See, Amy, we've yeah. still got eight minutes left. Plenty of time. Yeah, but if I'd left you to it, you would have kept going and going and going and we'd run out of time completely. And your point is? <laughs> kept you on track. After show. Yeah. So, anyway, okay. Um, just so, for... when did you two get married? <laughs> <laughs> what? They're bickering like an old married couple. <laughs> um, I'm not dating him. I'm dating Hawk. Scarecrow. I'm glad about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I didn't know you were dating anybody on the show. I was just goofing off. <laughs> <laughs> aye, aye, aye. <laughs> the thing that makes it the best is that Scarecrow's half out of it, and he is, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. uh, uh, well, if we need a space filler, you know, I just got in the the Bandai BB-8 and R2-D2 kit. Nice. And consider, ca considering these are one twelfth scale kits, the box is... Uh-oh. Let's see. Ah. The box... Sorry about that. The box is about the so length and width of a sheet of paper and probably inch and a half, two inches tall. Nice. And it is loaded with parts. I'm really impressed with how many pieces are in this box. Nice. This is, nice. This is not a Ravel kit. This, this is a real model kit with lots of parts. Well, that's what the oh, Japanese do really well. Oh, yes. Yeah. I was thinking of trying to shove a couple lights into it, and I'm going, I don't think there's room to put a light in here. Uh, I'm because sure you could find an... Uh, if, you, if you're trying to find a small, compact light that'll do the trick, look for something like a... Um, the... Oh, what are they called? I what they're there, called. There's no room with all the different plastic pieces, is my point, is there's no room to, to put... You'd have to... You'd be cutting multiple parts to try and do it. Be sacrificing stability for fair enough a gimmick. Fair enough. So, yeah, um, I was actually before Amy went nah about to mention that Thunderbirds has been back for a little bit. Been back for a while. It's been yeah. back for almost a year and a bit, dude. I mentioned no, no, that ages ago. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, they they went on break for a while, and now they they're back from the break. 
dude, they're just about. The show's just about. Season one's just about finished. I'm thinking. I know. Downloading tw- episode twenty four at the moment. You're not downloading anything. You're watching it on TV like normal people. Screw that. There's nothing good on TV. Yay. We at Safe Sci-Fi do not condone the pirating of anything. So please do not download it unless it's this podcast. Uh. Okay, Crow, you're fired. (laughs) Uh. And he's like, yes, finally. Freedom. Hey, everyone needs a good supply officer. We just have to cheat to get it. (laughs) Until Uh. it comes out on DVD. Exactly. That's that's the rule of thumb. If you enjoy it, support it. If you can't support it because it doesn't air near you, support it by buying the DVDs and Blu-rays. That is my golden rule, and that is why I have literally got a wall of DVDs and Blu-rays. <laughs> so, and twenty terabytes worth of hard drive space, which might or may not have stuff on it. And you say I'm bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I call it the Atlantis database, and it's rigged to look like the Atlantis database when you load it up. Which is pretty cool. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. Any other news or anything else? Um, not really. I got I got one, but I didn't want to say it because it potentially has spoilers for Civil War. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, while talking to um, China Press, uh, directors Anthony and Joe um, uh, Russo um, asked how Black Panther and Spidey c- um... come into it. Yeah, uh, so uh, Black Panther has his own agenda, and that's why he doesn't pick a side. Spidey's Spidey's very interesting. Um, he doesn't come in until after the Avengers pick sides, and, but apparently he gets a, he has a very personal relationship as to why he picks a side. Is he trying to hook up with Black Widow? I mean Scarlet Witch. <laughs> well, see, I'm more thinking towards Tony because I know Tony does. I know Tony does make um, Spidey in a suit yeah. in the comics, so... Well, yeah, he, he, he's he got a close relationship with, with uh, Tony Stark in the comics and in every uh, animated cartoon I've seen. Yeah, yeah. so they're probably that's probably where that's going to go. Well, see, I thought you were talking about the, spoil- the spoilers that Lego did. You heard about that, didn't you? I don't count Lego no. spoilers as spoilers. They've been proven wrong too often lately. No, this is one of their movie mo- their movie Lego kits for uh, Civil War has a fairly large spoiler on the front cover. Uh and they did a they did the same for a Star Wars kit. I believe it was a in, uh, Stormtrooper crewed snow speeder that oh wait never made it into the movie. Yeah, no, no. See, this is something which is probably going to happen. Thing is, if it winds up on the Lego box, you can almost guarantee it's not going to be a spoiler because they'll cut it. And for so, those who don't want to know what it is, tune out for the last two minutes of the podcast. For those who do want to know what it is, it's a giant king ant man. <laughs> oh yeah, giant man. At, at, yeah. at the at the airport battle scene. Yeah, Ant Man so, can go giant. Yeah, I know. Actually. I know Ant Man can go That's giant. That's not that much of a spoiler. But they haven't established that in the movies yet. Exactly. True, but if you know your history. Yeah, I know, I know. But they haven't they haven't established it in the movie, and even though they've shown part of the airport battle. They have shown shown stuff being disturbed, but with nothing disturbing it. And now everyone's like, oh my god, that's giant Ant-Man chasing them down. (laughs) Run, boys! So, yeah. So, uh, this is some really interesting um, Infinity War news. Um, Someone asked how many characters are going to be in in, um, Infinity War. 67 heroes. Wow. That would have to be all of... Everything. Yeah. You can't fit... You can't have that many storylines in a movie. They're, 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 a lot of them are just going to be, oh yeah, we're here too. Yeah, a lot of them will be. So, anyway. They'll show up for the final battle, pretty much. Yeah. Anyway, that's it for this week's podcast. We've what? managed to... Woo, we managed to fill the last eight minutes. Um, uh, one, one final note. The... Um, Defiance. Those pro- props will be going on eBay in the next week or so. Oh, nice. Fuck, I have no money. Um, so, yeah. So, anyway, that's it for this week. Uh, make sure you check out facebook.com slash save sci fi for all your sci fi news. Facebook.com slash save sci fi podcast. Give us a like, and then you'll get news on when the podcast's airing every week. 
9 a.m. Brisbane time on a Tuesday morning. So that's GMT plus 10. So catch you later. Okay, bye all. Bye, bye all. Bye. Bye. Bye.